Now, we need to input some technical details about the BRT and uh, look at the, uh, the more important uh, technical parameters that would actually lead to the calculation of the emissions reductions. The first one is actually the length of the BRT. Uh, the second one is BRT ridership, or how many people actually take the BRT per day. And the third one, I'll explain it later, this is an optional scorecard for integrating the quality of the BRT into the calculations. What it's actually saying is that a higher quality BRT would attract more passengers into the system, and thus a bonus factor is given. Um, this is actually based on the BRT gold standard that was developed by ITDP, or the Institute for Transport Development Policy. And uh, we integrated the uh, scorecard here to be able to account for the importance of the quality of the BRT. So let's just do that. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, look at the length of the PRT. Um, according to the local data that we have, um, the 2010 started around uh, 20 kilometers and uh, moved towards uh, 63. And that's going to be the, the maximum length of the system. And uh, we go back. We go to the BRT ridership. And as you can see here, you would actually be asked this question. Let me just zoom it a bit. Okay. Again, we were working on the premise that not a lot of people would actually have good data in terms of uh, the BRT ridership, especially if you haven't done your pre-feasibility study for the project and uh, you're just uh, looking at potential uh, emissions reduction based on uh, certain parameters, but you don't have the solid idea of the project yet, you don't have the project proposal, you don't have the pre-feasibility study. So it asks you this question, um, or you can actually choose. Do you have the, the BRT ridership uh, per day, 1,000 per day, and you would like to input it directly, and you can also say that the uh, ridership figures are not available. Let's just click this first. Uh, for this one, we actually have some figures for the ridership, but uh, for the purposes of learning, let's uh, check the second one and assume that we don't have the ridership. And after you've chosen your, um, or you chose in your, your choice, you can actually, you just click the green button here and uh, it would lead you to this bit, the ridership estimator. The ridership estimator here, um, which was a product of discussions with different partners, um, uh, it's actually based on the existing public transport ridership in the corridor. So how many people are using public transport in that corridor. So this is the basis. And this is um, being expanded in the future based on a simple assumption that it would grow at the same rate with the population growth rate in the area or in the city. So you'd have uh, these different timelines here. We have some data inputted already um, for another case. And um, after this, you're going to be asked regarding the mode share in the corridor if the BRT is not implemented. What this actually uh, refers to is how many of the trips or what percentage of the trips would actually go to the cars, to the two-wheelers, to the taxis, to the three-wheelers, to the bus, to the minibus. And you can actually input some more modes here, like uh, maybe Let's say, for example, we have, let's say, a jeep here. So it would actually turn green. You can input your values. But as long as this one is 100, so I'll demonstrate, like, let's make this zero. So this one becomes 90. It gives you a warning. The total cell um, becomes 90 and actually turns to red. So it gives you 
that warning that you have done uh, or you've entered something that is erroneous. Let's just release that. And um, yeah, so let's just go back again because we actually do have the, rider the, the ridership for the project. So the, the choice that you make here um, is based on what you choose here. So if you choose the first option, you would be directed to another place in the Excel sheet. And uh, in here, you would be asked to directly input the ridership. So let's say that uh, according to the local data currently available, um, 21,000 in 2010 per day uh, are actually riding it. And it, this would go to 25 and 30. Again, um, these are draft data that we are working on. But uh, just to give you the gist of how the calculations and the inputting is done using the BRT model. And again, you're given this table for the mode shift to the BRT. Now this one, this, you, this gives you the uh, opportunity to define um, what would have been the uh, percentages of the passengers that would have taken these other modes if the BRT was not there. So how many would have gone to the cars, to the two-wheelers, to the taxis, to the three-wheelers, bus. NMT is just non-motorized transport, walking, and bicycling. And uh, yeah, this one is a special case here, the RTV that we've uh, included. So let's just say that we have data on this, uh, like 30% of the trips would have gone to the cars if the BRT wasn't there. 40 would have gone to the two-wheelers. 5% to the taxis and 3% uh, well, to, the, to the buses. 2% would have gone walking or cycling and 20% uh, to the local RTV. Now, let's just use this for the other years since data is not yet available for the projections. Um, another practical tip when using the TIMP model is that if you're copying and pasting uh, from cells, it is recommended that you actually use um, or you paste it as a value or a formula, just not to mess up the color coding guides that are embedded in the cells. OK, so again, let's do that. Okay. Now it tells you to proceed. Please click on the home button and move to the next section, the BRT scorecard. Sorry. So we're back here. Um, so we finished the basic information, the information on the BRC system and ridership length of BRD, BRT ridership, and we go to the BRT scorecard. Now this is what it looks like. You would see here different categories and different elements that would actually define what a bus rapid transit system is and what a good BRT system would actually have. And these are embedded also in the BRT gold standard um, that was produced by ITDP. A link is given in one of the sheets. Uh, we'll go through that uh, link later. But this is what I'm telling you earlier, that some of the cells would actually have guides in them. Just uh, minimize this a bit. So if you say that these are the parameters for uh, scoring the service planning for the BRT, um, and these are the elements. It would give you an explanation what the parameter is and how you actually score it. 
Okay, so you have different scoring systems for the different um, parameters. And these were, the points were given and the categorization for the points were given based on extensive consultations with different BRT experts worldwide. And uh, you can, um, the, the, the ridership bonus was actually calculated based on the difference, uh, taking into account what is currently there and what the BRT would offer. And uh, once you have um, inputted the scores for the different parameters, you have service planning, you have infrastructure, you have station design, station bus interface, you have quality of service and passenger information system, integration and access. And you have actually some parameters that would deduct some points from the BRT. Um, right now, since we don't have any value for the BRC, BRT system, per se, um, we're coming up with a zero here. It's a uh, 1 to 100, actually. And uh, there's a certain calculation that converts this into a ridership factor. It's not a lot, but it gives um, initial quantification of what a good BRT system can actually do to the ridership. And the factor was actually calculated based on some of the existing data that uh, um, were taken from the case studies that um, ITDB has worked in, looking at the different parameters that they have and what were the impacts on the ridership. So right now, the ridership bonus factor is just one. It means that the, uh, the ridership, whatever we inputted, would remain that way in the calculations. If we actually inputted some values here, let's say, uh, um, oh. just zoom in. OK, look for this one. Let's say it's three things. you would have incremental additions to the factor, but still, this is not BRD. So it depends on the scoring, they actually give you um, bronze, silver, and of course a gold standard uh, based on the parameters or the scores that you give in terms of the different parameters. Right now, since we don't have the, uh, the data available with us, we're going to treat this as uh, as such, and uh, we're not taking into consideration right now the uh, the 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 features in terms of the BRT scorecard for the Bandung BRT.